Microfluidics. What is it? How does it work? What is it used for today? Welcome to the Microfluidics Adventures of the Lutetium Project. Microfluidics is a science of flows at the microscopic scale, but it's also a mature technology that has already been applied to everyday objects, such as e-readers, inkjet printers, and lab-on-a-chip devices that can shrink a whole laboratory down to a few square inches. And microfluidics can be found everywhere in nature as well. Sap rising in trees, blood flowing in capillaries, and spiders threading their webs. Question is, why would the size of these systems alone give them interesting properties? To answer this, let's talk about scaling laws. A scaling law is a very broad way of describing the variation of a physical quantity as a function of the size of the system. You probably already know two simple scaling laws. The area of an object scales like the square of its length, and the volume scales like the cube of its length. Here is a graph to show a few power functions. For greater numbers, the higher the power, the higher the result. But on the other hand, for smaller numbers, higher powers give a lower result. This shows that for large objects, volume should matter more than surface, whereas for small objects, it should be the other way around. Interactions between objects usually depend either on their volume or their area, which can lead to surprising results. Here's an example. Two balls of modeling clay made of the same mass. For these objects, their three dimensions are of comparable size, which makes them volumic. Now let's turn one of these balls into a thin sheet. There are virtually only two dimensions left. We've created a surface object. Now let's see what happens when we put these two objects in water. The ball sinks, whereas the disc floats. The behavior depends not only on the mass, but also the shape of the object, on the relationship between the surface and the volume. In the microscopic world, surface effects matter more, which leads to seemingly counterintuitive situations. Surface and volume are not the only physical quantities that behave weirdly. For example, forces related to the surface tension, which we talked about in this video, scale like the size of the object in contact with the liquid to the power of one. On the other hand, gravity is proportional to the mass, and therefore to the volume, which means that it goes like the size of the object to the power of 3. In the case of insects, weight isn't that important compared to surface tension. As a result, having hydrophobic legs is enough to walk on water. Another phenomenon? Heat transfer. See this cute little thing? It's called an Etruscan shrew. It's the lightest mammal on Earth. Unfortunately, this one wasn't eating when the picture was taken, and this is quite bad. Animals eat to get energy, and the heavier the animal, the more food it needs. A golden retriever, roughly two times the size of a poodle, needs to eat twice as much. And since mass is proportional to volume, the energy intake per unit time goes like the cube of the animal's size. But mammals, like all warm-blooded animals, lose energy all the time by heat transfer from their body to the surrounding environment. And it's been shown that this energy loss scales like the size to the power of one. As a result, the smaller the animal, the higher the energy loss compared to the food intake, which means that small animals have to eat more often lest they freeze to death. So basically, mammals can't exist below a certain size. And the tiniest, such as the Etruscan shrew, must spend all their time eating. On the other hand, whales have so much trouble getting rid of their excess energy that if they're put out of water, they warm up and start to roast. All of these examples show that the microscopic world hides many interesting properties, Surprising for us, but unnoticeable for insects. But can we use those characteristics to work at the microscopic scale? Well, yes, since we've made tools and gears for ants. Insects are no longer the only ones able to play with micrometric physics. Many objects have been designed at this scale, such as beams, springs, motors, guitars, and even rivers. How can we engineer a micro river? Well, you can learn that in the next episode of our Microfluidics Adventures. If you have anything to say about the video or its content, you can leave a comment. And if you like this video and don't want to miss the next ones, feel free to subscribe.